Daddy's talking to himself again. In this video, I'm going to show how I created this inlay effect in this sycamore bowl using some holly branch and some black milliput. Hello folks, I'm back in my workshop at long last. It's been a while, I know, I just have not had any time at all. Um, sorry about the face fungus. Uh, I'm just growing it ready for Ucus later this month so I can be in Mike Walt's gang. Nah, not really. I've uh, been away and uh, shaved my head and my face before going and let it grow. Um, it's now it's all coming off later tonight or tomorrow morning ready for work but uh, it's got to that point now where my wife says it's um, difficult to tell which way up my head should be so I guess it's time to shave it all off. Anyway, back to the project. Um, I'm revisiting an old project uh, and it's my most popular video on YouTube, it's the one that's had the most views uh, and it's the copper and oak twigs and sycamore bowl and it's where I set sections of oak branch and twigs in a copper resin around the rim of a sycamore bowl. I'll put a link to that video at the end uh, so if you haven't seen it you can click on that and have a look. I'm doing a variation on that. It's another sycamore bowl. It'll be a thinner rimmed bowl, less chunky. And it's going to be using this, which is a 12 inch by 3 inch kiln dried sycamore bowl blank. And uh, yeah, it's a whopper. But what I'm going to do, or what I hope to do, plans might change, is. Um, create a bowl put a recess around the edge and instead of setting oak pieces in i found this old piece of holly in the uh, in the back of the garage and i've done a lot of things with these holly poles uh, and they've been in the garage for several years they're bone dry and i've used them for wood carving and making things before uh, and it's lovely white wood um, so I found one left over and I'm going to cut some discs out of this and set them in black milliput. So it should contrast really nicely with the white Hollywood. But that's the plan. We'll see how it goes. And uh, I'll be back, back shortly. I start by cutting the holly stick into small, roughly straight sections, cutting out nodes and bendy bits and things. Uh, it just means I'm going to get a better cylinder out of it when I strip the bark. Mounting it between step centres, using quite high speed on the lathe and a spindle roughing gouge and I'm just taking it down until all the bark's off. I'm not overly worried about diameter and finish and things like this, this is just to get the bark off. Like I say, the lathe's quite high speed to do this. Very sharp spindle roughing gouge. Just removing it from between the centres. You can see I've got quite a collection of them now. Here I'm using a sanding machine just to neaten up the edges of the discs. I cut the discs out of the dowels using a bandsaw. Uh, I made a special jig to hold the dowel and a zero clearance table and a very narrow push stick. You need to use something to support round stock when cutting on a bandsaw because otherwise it can jam and kick. I mounted the blank on a face plate and uh, here I'm running it as fast as I can but it's slightly out of balance and out of true. I'm just truing it up using a bowl gouge. This is a half inch Robert Sorby bowl gouge with a fingernail grind. And uh, just gradually taking it down and shaping it. Push cuts and scraping going on. Just running across the base, truing it up. Had a fair old wobble on this. I think it, you know, was slightly uneven density in this wood. And it was quite hard work just to get it running true. Just neatening it up and getting the shape right. I don't have to worry too much about finish at this stage because uh, I'm going to be doing some inlay work on this and I'll be refinishing it after doing the inlay work. 
it's neatening up the profile a little bit of shear scraping a few push cuts you can see I've put a glove on at this point because the shavings get very hot coming off this kiln dried sycamore be really careful using gloves make sure they're tight fitting and fingerless do not let them come into contact with anything I can't really recommend using a glove for wood turning because there's many people who frown upon it but I actually was getting you know almost a burnt hand doing this until I put the glove on now marking out for the recess in the bottom I'm using 89 millimeter chuck jaws um, so I'm just using the parting tool to create the recess should have changed camera angle at this point then a skew chisel to create the undercut and the dovetail here we are, I've changed camera angle there I've marked the centre as well now I'm uh, creating the uh, recess now I'm measuring the depth of these these are what I'd call depth orientation grooves I groove all the way along the recess at, to the correct depth, which is the same thickness of the uh, as the holly discs. I'm just checking the depth there. Then I join up all the grooves, and I know I've got a consistent depth of recess right the way across. Just using the parting tool. I tested some discs, and I needed to widen it a bit, so just widening it. And now I'm attaching these discs using a hot glue gun. I'm trying to be as random as possible. I don't want it to be perfectly uniform, but it's quite difficult to do that. I'm just uh, test fitting each one, then gluing it in with a tiny spot of hot glue. The hot glue is literally just to hold them in place while I uh, finish the rest of the inlay work. With hot glue, your best the bigger the hot glue gun, the better. The little ones don't really get very hot. All done. Now I'm mixing up some of my favourite G-Flex epoxy resin. It's a slow set epoxy resin. It has about the same set rate actually as the, the Milliput. Or as, well, it's a bit quicker than Milliput to set, but working time-wise it's, um, it's about the same. Mixing it up thoroughly. Take your time, make sure it's all thoroughly mixed. And then I'm pouring it into a syringe. Now this is what you call a dental utility syringe. It's got a very fine tip on it. You can buy these off eBay very cheaply. Um, they're not expensive if you buy, you know, buy them in bulk. And I'm syringing a tiny bead of epoxy around each disc. This is probably not strictly necessary, but it does help the milliput flow and stick and eliminates voids. And it, I think it does strengthen around the uh, discs to stop breakout and I'm then uh, using a very fine uh, or medium paintbrush a cheap thing off the market just to spread out the glue and cover the sides and of the discs and the recess I've now got milliput epoxy putty if you've seen any of my videos you'll have seen this a lot and I'm uh, measuring equal quantities in this case I'm using a whole packet so I just use both of the uh, the sausages and I start by kneading them and kneading them until you know they're part mixed and then I start my roll and fold technique where I uh, roll it between my palms and then fold the ends into the middle and roll it again and fold the ends into the middle and roll it again and fold the ends into the middle and roll it again and you need to mix it for a good five minutes so you've got to be really thorough with the mixing now here I'm squidging it down between the holly discs. The uh, epoxy resin is still sticky at this stage that I painted in. And I use a little stick just to help me get it into any of the narrower grooves. But it does take a long time this bit. Just keep squidging it and squidging it. Make sure there's no voids. And make sure that you're slightly proud of the surface as well. So that you can cut it back. And that's it. All done. Looks horrible at this stage but it'll come out nice leave it overnight to set it will set after four or five hours but it gets really hard if left overnight back on the lathe for the reveal i'm using my square nosed extra heavy duty scraper from robert sorby i love this tool and it is perfect for this work works really well on the end grain of the holly 
and you can see the pattern emerges very quickly and it's very satisfying doing this bit although it is a bit messy I was covered in uh, this uh, sort of grey dust I keep stopping periodically to make sure that uh, that I'm getting it into the right places making sure there's no low spots that I've cut it all back I've got a nice even cut on the holly and the inlay just uh, finishing up making sure it's all neat and there it is just in the speed I'm doing a bit of sanding using the Simon Hope Pro Sander I'm using the larger sanding pad for these big bowls it's ideal really you get a lovely finish on milliput if you use a circular you know a circular motion just dusting it off now then we've got two coats of sanding sealer you can see it really pops when you put the sanding sealer on i haven't hollowed the bowl at this stage it's still on the face plate then my yorkshire grip one of my favorite bits as well I put a generous amount of this on and then work it and work it and it gets finer and finer and you get a really beautiful finish on both the wood and the milliput. You just keep working it and buffing it away. And then I've finished it just with a, a fine coat of microcrystalline wax which I buff. Now taking the faceplate off, just using my impact driver. I managed to shear a couple of the screws, which was a right palaver. I've turned it round, bowls back on the uh, on the lathe, and I'm starting hollowing. I'm using a three eighths Robert Sorby bowl gouge for this. Glove back on, being careful. But these shavings are hot. I've speeded this up because it gets a bit boring otherwise. Just hollowing it bit by bit. I did lose a bit of footage here because the memory card filled up and I didn't realise it had. There we go. I then switched to um, a Robert Sorby heavy duty bowl scraper. And uh, I had to um, keep sharpening this. They do take a, a lot of sharpening. And now I'm power sanding and a couple of coats of sanding sealer and the Yorkshire grit and then microcrystalline wax. It's coming off the chuck onto the Longworth style chuck now. Changing the, uh, the lathe chuck over to receive the Longworth style chuck. Mounting the uh, Longworth style chuck onto the lathe. I then go around and tighten all these rubber pegs three turns each one doing opposite sides each time to keep the uh, bowl centralized lovely bit of kit this um, long with style chuck really enjoy using this and then we've got it running at 600 rpm and I'm turning away the recess using uh, Robert Sorby negative rake scraper it used to be called the hardwood scraper you do need to keep sharpening this. They don't hold an edge very long, these negative rake scrapers. I pull the tailstock out of the way and just scrape away that central nub. And then a bit of power sanding, just to create a nice smooth contour on the bottom. Then branding iron, put my logo on. Do a little bit of fine sanding, get rid of that pencil mark I put on there. Then the usual finish. The other thing I've done is uh, I've managed to put a few um, stickers up in my workshop now. There's a few duplicates and things, but there's Jay Bates, Heath Knuckles, Mike Walt, Peter Brown, uh, and that's the Maker's Central um, sticker. Um, that's just a Madness sticker I picked up at a concert. And if we swing round, yeah, it's another shot of Mike Walt, uh, Nick, Nick Zamet, 
um, and that's Jay Bates's other logo sticker I think. Make a central again. Yuval Lahav, you kiss. Daniel Villarino, Carol Kolonowski, KK Make, The Black Dog Workshop, that's Martin's uh, workshop, Martin Saban Smith, and uh, another NZ Wood Turning sticker there. Well, the bowl's finished. I'm out in my garden with the hydrangeas in flower behind me, and it's another beautiful hot evening here in the UK. We've had some wonderful weather lately, we've had a real heat wave, it's absolutely brilliant. Anyway, here's the bowl. It's about 11 and a half inches diameter. And I've finished it in uh, two coats of sanding sealer, Yorkshire grit, and microcrystalline wax. There you go. And there's the uh, sections of holly branch set in milliput. I'm very pleased uh, that's come out. It's got lovely feel to it. I can't really, uh, you can't really see that from the um, from the video. I'll try and uh, get it a bit closer, but it's lovely and smooth textured. Well, that's great. Anyway, next week is UKIS, UK and Ireland Wood Turning Symposium, and I am really looking forward to going to that. Last year was great, I had such a laugh and uh, met everyone and it was just really good fun. And this year proves to be just as good. We've got some great demonstrators coming along. Um, Mike Walt, Martin Saban Smith, Steve Twydale, Mark Sanger, Pat Carroll, um, Mick Hambry, Phil Irons, uh, Chris Fisher and Gary Lowe. Uh, so it's just going to be a wonderful lineup, and I'm just really looking forward to it. It's going to be so good. Um, but that's next week, the 15th and 16th of July, at the Coventry Hilton. So if you haven't got a ticket, get one. It really is sort of the highlight of the uh, YouTube wood turning year this year in the UK. Um, Maker Central's going very well for next year, and that's next May, the 5th and 6th of May very exciting really the people who are coming along there and the companies who are involved so that's going to be very very good as well i'll put links to ukis um, in the uh, description of the video to the website and i look forward to seeing any of you that come along i'm going to be there both days uh, i don't know if i'll be there all day sunday but i'll be there most of saturday um, and i look forward to seeing you all another point of interest some of you already know I'm now on Instagram. I'm sort of dipping my toe in the in the uh, social media water, so to speak. I'm not great with computers and social media. YouTube's about as far as it gets, and um, and there's certain aspects of that I struggle with. I'm not not good at sitting at computers and things, but uh, Instagram looking promising uh, and I'm going to put pictures of my creations on there uh, I put a couple of or a preview picture of the bowl I've just made on there this week um, it'll be mainly stuff I've made but there will be a few sort of more personal social lifestyle pictures on there hat of the week is going to be a feature to start with I've got quite a big hat collection so uh, you'll be seeing a few of those on there um, and other stupid pictures like that I'll put some pictures of you kiss on there uh, after next weekend anyway i think that about wraps it all up for now um thanks to milliput for supplying me with the milliput and uh and uh i look forward to seeing any of you next week who are coming along i'll be going along with um, nick zamet from uh, nz wood turning and we'll be traveling up so cheerio for now i'll be back soon with some more project videos thank you very much for watching and thank you very much to all my subscribers I really appreciate it and you can now follow me on Instagram as I said earlier and uh, there'll be pictures of my creations and some of my other obsessions so you might see uh, get an idea about what makes me tick by the way if anyone works out what makes me tick if they could drop me a line I'd really appreciate it because I haven't worked it out yet thanks again for watching please like share and subscribe I'd really appreciate it I'll always try and reply to all comments that you leave.
I'll put a few stills or close-ups of the bowl at the end and there'll be links to uh, UKIS and Makers Central and my Instagram and all that in the description. So thanks for watching and I'll be back soon with some more videos. More videos coming soon.